Hey guys, welcome to the channel and another episode of Hacking Modding News and Info. This one is episode 57 and very quickly, just as a reminder, I want to remind you guys that because of the holidays, I've just been super busy and there will be times where these weekly episodes may not come out on Mondays. Maybe it'll come out on Tuesday or Wednesday, or I may have to skip a week here and there altogether. Once we hit the beginning of January and all the holidays are behind us, then these episodes will get back to normal. The other thing is make sure you check out any of the videos that I released during this past week, because anything that I covered there, I won't be covering in this video. For example, the last one I did showed a pic of an actual E4 flasher for the PS4. Plus I also talk about update to Lethal's 6.72 host menu for the PS4. So yeah, make sure you look at my previous videos that I released for this past week so that way you don't miss out on anything that you might find useful or informative. All right, let's go ahead and let's kick this episode off. Not a whole lot to talk about. We'll be covering the Vita, I think the 3DS, the Switch, an update to an iOS jailbreak, a couple of miscellaneous mentions, and an update to CMU, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and kick things off with the PS Vita. And the only thing we'll be covering on the Vita this week will be an update to Hexflow Launcher. This is something that I covered for the first time in one of last week's episodes. This is a relatively new homebrew and it is a game and app launcher. But the thing here that separates it is the style. Just take a look at the presentation. It has like that 3D box type view. It just looks great. You can see the box art. You can make your own box art. You can even change the background. It just looks really, really good. There's a bunch of information here on everything you need to do, including if you want to you know, use your own backgrounds and box arts. Anyway, when you go over to the releases, there's been two releases or two updates since we last talked about this 0.3 and 0.3.1, which is a hot fix. There's been several issues that have been addressed and fixed, as well as they added some options here and there, like they added the option to download covers. They also improved the details page. They fixed an issue that was going on with the fonts and a few other things. So if you've already been using this, make sure you get the latest version because there's enough here that warrants getting the update due to all the fixes that they've done. And next we head on over to the switch scene. First is an update to NS USB loader. This is actually a tool that I use a lot. It's for the PC and it has a few functionalities. For example, you can split files, you can merge files, you can use it as a payload injector, but the way I use it, and I think the way most people use it, its main functionality is to install backed up game files that you have somewhere on your PC, straight from your PC into your Switch without having to put those game files in your Switch first. So it can come in really handy, especially if you don't want to go through all the trouble of transferring the file to like your SD card. Then once it's on your SD card, then you install it into the switch. You can bypass that by just installing it straight from your PC. So yeah, it has a lot of good functionality and it works with AWU installer, with tinfoil. It works with the NSA installer that Team Neptune just released not too long ago. It works with Goldleaf. So it definitely gives you options on how to use it and with what to use it with. Anyway, there's a few fixes that have happened in this latest version. So make sure you get this one. And there are two jar files here. Those of you who are on a certain iOS who use Mac, you may need to use the legacy version. The README covers all of those details. Pretty much everyone else on Windows and stuff will just use the regular jar file, the NSUSB loader 4.5. And next we have an update to RE3 NX. This is a port of GTA 3 over to the Switch. So those of you 
who need your Grand Theft Auto 3 fix and you have a modded Switch, then this may be for you. Here at Logic Sunrise, there's a demo video along with some information. So I'll put the link here down in the description, but I'll also link the GitHub page. The GitHub page also has a wealth of information here as well. Over in the releases is where all the install instructions are. So if you've never used this before, make sure you read up on everything. There are people that are having some audio issues and apparently I believe this little audio zip file helps fix that. And then the RE3 zip is what you install into your Switch itself. And now we'll take a peek over at the 3DS scene and we'll see that there's a couple of things here that have updated. First is Universal Updater. For those who are not familiar with what this is, think of it as like a homebrew app store for your 3DS. So this allows you to download homebrews and check to see if any of the ones you already have installed, if they need updating. So this is integrated with the Universal Database Store. It's easy for you to download and update your homebrews. It has a flexible and easily developable scripting system. For those of you who are so inclined to mess with that, it comes in multi-languages and it has a customizable interface where you can change out the colors to whatever you like. Anyway, you can see here in the pics, it's very simple, straightforward. I do like the interface. And again, you can just download stuff straight from here, or you can check to see if anything you have installed needs updating. Over here, you have your various download buttons. Everything on the left is what is current and is stable, while the nightly builds are over on the right side. And now let's take a look at 3DS Bank. This is a homebrew that I don't think I've ever covered before on here. It's just been updated and it serves a purpose that might be convenient for some of you out there. There is a limitation on how many like games and apps and things like that you can actually install into the 3DS itself. And this allows you to supersede that number. And that number is 300. So the limit is 300 titles, but with this, you can go beyond those 300 titles. I know some of you might be saying, that's crazy. Who would have that many games or apps or whatever installed all at once? But you'd be surprised, especially on a modded 3DS. So there are some instructions here on the main GitHub page in the README file. When you go over to the releases though, the installation couldn't be simpler. It's a SIA file, install it like you would any other SIA and you're all set. And now let's stroll on over to the world of emulation. The only thing we'll be covering here is an update to CMU, which is a Wii U emulator for a PC. I've already covered this to death before in the past. It's absolutely the best Wii U emulator hands down that's out there. Anyway, this latest update adds a nice amount of enhancements and improvements overall, which is usually the case with this. And it's always getting an update, usually at least once a week, maybe once every two weeks or more than that. It truly is a labor of love and you can tell the amount of work and dedication they put into this one. There'll be a link to this video here as well showing 1.21.5, which is the latest update in action. There's no talking or anything here explaining some of the details about this particular update, but nonetheless, you can see it in action and as usual, it looks great. And we'll wrap things up this week with a couple of miscellaneous mentions, starting with an update to Check Rain. This is now on 12.0 beta, and it's always beta. This latest version adds official support for iOS 14.1 and 14.2, official support for A10 and A10X devices on iOS 14.0 and higher, limited support for all devices on iOS 14.0 and up. There's been several bug fixes. If you are planning on using this for the first time, make sure that you check out the known issues. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there showing you how to jailbreak your iOS device using Check Rain. So you have plenty of choices out there to help you out. Down at the bottom, there are various files for you to download. Just pick the one that's right for you. Normally, whenever we see an update to Check Rain, usually shortly thereafter, we will see an update to 
uncover which is the other jailbreak for ios so if we do get an update to that of course i will let you guys know and the last thing we'll be talking about is an update to better joy so this is for the pc and it allows you to use a nintendo switch pro controller joy cons and snes controller with emulators like simu citra dolphin and yuzu i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly you can use again a switch a pro controller joy cons snes with those emulators and this helps simplify that process there is a whole section here on how to use this this used to be called better joy for cmu but now it works for more than just the cmu emulator when you go over to your releases you'll go ahead and download the latest zip which has all the files you need for Windows 64 and 32-bit systems. And that is gonna do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just wanna throw some love or appreciation towards the channel, as always, you know the best way to do any of those things is just to hit that like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun, and we will see you on the next one.